Okay, Chris Eubanks Jr. Okay, okay, Chris Eubanks. I see you, boss. Uh, that's how you turn things around. Uh, that's how you come back stronger uh, 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 and, and handle your business. Congratulations to Chris Eubanks Jr. for avenging his loss to Liam Smith. Uh, and listen, man, I felt like this is how the first fight was supposed to go for sure. Let's talk about it. What up, YouTube? Big T.O. Heavy Bad Boxing TV, man. Get your goofy looking ass in here and hit the bag. Hit that like button for your boy that helps the channel. You know, I appreciate that love. Shout out my gang, man. My bag hitters. Y'all already know the count. Uh, and real quick, do me a favor. Beat the hell out of that like button. Me and that like button beefing like. We, we beefing. Shit is real right now. So I need y'all to whoop that like button's ass for me. Um, now, listen, man. I felt like in the first fight, a lot it, a part part of this fight was a carbon copy. I always just felt like Chris Eubanks was the better uh, fighter. Um, he, he, he definitely had the advantage in the hand speed in both fights. Um, you know, Liam Smith likes to keep that that high and tight guard um, and wait for his opportunities to really open up as he's he was kind of walking Chris Eubanks down. But in the first fight, he was able to penetrate that defense. He uh, because Chris Eubanks looked a lot like Roy Jones. You could tell he was getting trained by Roy Jones, and that was I felt like that was detrimental because he had his hands to his side a lot in that fight. And Liam Smith was able to catch him. You know what I'm saying? But up until that point, the hand speed was still on display. Uh, I thought he was beating Liam. Smith in my opinion a lot like this fight but this fight right here was completely dominant uh in my opinion um it was no point in this fight where I felt like Liam Smith was winning a round or having some really really good success or anything that fourth round was pivotal for me as far as uh, uh Liam Smith getting whooped even even more Right, because he got knocked down. He caught him. He caught him with a nice shot, knocked him down in the fourth round. But in that tenth round, I got some of this for y'all right here. Uh, this is where it got ugly, man. He was able to touch him and he was able to hurt him, and it was the overwhelming uh, hand speed and and the uh, volume of shots that really got Liam Smith out of there. Uh, the conditioning from Chris Eubanks Jr. was crazy in this fight. You could tell he was in a lot better condition for this fight. Um, the combination punches, I, I truly believe the hand speed and the combination punches won him this fight. Now, it was a lot of times in this fight where uh, he was using what I like to call that old Bernard Hopkins uh, uh, technique where uh, he kind of hits and holds. He was able to smother the offense of uh, Liam Smith a lot during this fight early on, which can frustrate uh, a fighter where you saw Liam Smith really kind of throwing rabbit punches at that point because he was getting held on the inside and then he was getting completely outboxed on the outside. But in the 10th round, man, he was just able to go ahead and, and uh, um, use that hand speed. Um, he caught him with something nice uh, that hurt him. Uh, and then those flurries and those combinations was able to uh, give the ref enough to go ahead and stop this fight. He did, in fact, have him hurt for sure, um, definitely in that 10th round. Um, just a, a, a beautiful display of, of boxing from Chris Eubanks Jr. in a rematch uh, that I felt like was warranted. Because, again, I felt like in the first fight, um, if Liam Smith, uh, you know, didn't get those, that, those particular shots off in that round, uh, you know, he was going to be in for a long night. And, and Chris Eubanks Jr. could have, you know, coasted to a victory in, in the first fight. Um, and I think a lot of people felt like it was a matter of time before Liam Smith caught him with something in this fight. Uh, but he was able to Bo Mack, Bo Mack was able to help button that defense up of um, Chris Eubanks Jr. And kind of implement, I feel like that, like I say, that Bernard Hopkins technique where he just smothered all of the offense on the inside from Liam Smith, where he does his his best work um, in this particular matchup versus a Chris Eubanks Jr. Um, so Bo Mack with great instructions. Uh, it's it's you know sometimes a trainer makes all of the difference. I think he was able to button up what he needed to button up. Um, the defense, uh, as far as the defense wise, and of course, you know, just the hand speed and overall boxing ability and IQ from Chris Eubanks Jr. I always felt it was superior to Liam Smith in the first place. Um, so it just worked out perfect um, in this go round, and it was just a beautiful stoppage in the 10th round. All right, so uh, congratulations to Chris Eubanks Jr., man. Um, hell of a performance. Looking forward to seeing what he when he what he does next. I don't know if he want, he, he called out, you know, uh, Connor Ben, who um you know got caught up on 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 uh peds he called out kill i don't know why but uh we'll see what's next from chris eubanks jr 
I mean, listen, he's on the last leg of his career. Um, good fighter, but you know, nothing, nothing. I never thought it was anything special. I'm just keeping it a buck, him or Liam Smith. Uh, but it's boxing. I'm watching. You guys, let me know what you think in the uh, comment section, man. Big T.O. Heavy Bag. You know I got Unk with me, right? And listen, let me tell you something. Unk don't like half of you niggas, but he got something he want to tell you. Talk to him, Roger. Most motherfuckers don't know shit about boxing.